What a great time to be a Giant, be a fan of the Giants. But we have something going here. We're building something special, and you know you can see it from the outside and inside. It's even more beautiful. Reflecting on everything that got me here, just to see that uniform, and you know I, I watched. That's the team I watched the most growing up. My dad was a Giants fan, so once a Giant, always a Giant. For me, it's only a Giant. Welcome, everybody, to a special post-game edition of All In with Art Stapleton, a New York Giants podcast brought to you by NorthJersey.com and The Record. I am your host, Art Stapleton. I am recording this and coming to you from the Giants radio booth at MetLife Stadium. The rain's coming down here on a Sunday night. The Giants are officially going into their bye week, and the Tommy DeVito show continues. New York Giants, 10 New England Patriots 7. This certainly was not Super Bowl 42 and 46. Rather, the team that loses, we may be looking back at this game in April and saying, boy, really would have loved to lose that game and improve our position for draft standing. But the reality is the Giants win this game and Tommy DeVito really continuing to make things happen. And I, I just think that, you know, We've gone from DeVito being a story that's a fun story, a North Jersey story, a New Jersey story, NFL long shot, underdog, gets an opportunity when Tyrod Taylor cracks a few ribs, and then when Daniel Jones goes out for the season and Tyrod Taylor's on injured reserve, there's all this speculation about bringing a veteran in uh, to compete. Matt Barkley came in and it, it was only a matter of time, right? That Matt Barkley was going to take over. He had history in this giant, in this Dable offense, you know, Dable Kafka offense now. And someone forgot to tell Tommy DeVito that he wasn't supposed to be doing this. And I think it went from being a fun show to Tommy DeVito showing that he can actually play some quarterback here in this league. And what does that mean? It doesn't mean that he's the future at quarterback for the New York Giants. It doesn't even mean that he's the future backup of this team. This is a heck of a run right now. He's had a couple good games against teams that are really tier teams, right? It's the idea that, well, they beat Washington and they beat New England. Who cares? Well, you know what? They won games in this league, and that's what backups need to do in this league. And if you look across the league, forget about looking across the league. Look at the team they played today, the New England Patriots. Has a first-round draft pick at quarterback in Mac Jones and then has a late-round draft pick in Bailey Zappi. Tommy DeVito looked like he was playing in, you know, in the NFL, and those two guys looked like they were playing in you know, the lower level of college football. That's the difference in how they were playing. And it all started from the beginning today. From early on, you know, hats off to Mike Garofolo of the NFL Network, going to Natoli's and Sea Caucus, ordering a Tommy DeVito, the chicken parm with vodka sauce, and eating it live on the air today. We had a lot of laughs before the game, waiting outside the Giants locker room for arrivals. And, you know, if you follow this program, you know that I've been on the Tommy DeVito story from day one. You haven't gotten more information from anywhere else but from us from me on this show on NorthJersey.com. He's our guy. So we were going to follow this story no matter what. And it goes all the way back to May when I broke the signing that he was signing with the Giants as an undrafted free agent. Talked to him at rookie minicamp, and it's gone on and on and on. I talked to him when he was waived by the Giants in August. When, before that, when he played here against the Jets and met Aaron Rodgers before the game in that preseason game, Talked to him in the locker room, outside the locker room, one-on-one. -on -one. Had that interview for you on All In. So we've been on this Tommy DeVito story from the very beginning. So I had the opportunity to talk to Tommy, and I wrote a column about it today after his press conference as he was making his way from the locker room to the family room to meet up with his family. Obviously, we saw his mom and dad and his brother on the big screen. Fox reported that he had over 200 people here. Well, Tommy guaranteed during the week, ticket requests, they were all on their own, that he had three ticket requests that he was going to fill. It was going to be his dad, Tom Sr., 
his mom, Alexandra, and his brother. And that was it. Everybody else was on their own. And that's been the focus of Tommy DeVito. You know, as much as we've seen him, all the attention off the field and the Today Show debating about Tommy DeVito and what his relationship status would be on Hoda and Jenna if he stayed living with his parents in Cedar Grove to ESPN mocking him a little bit for being at his family's house in Cedar Grove. And, you know, Tommy kind of brought a little bit of that on himself, joking about, you know, how his mom still makes his bed and makes the chicken cutlets. And, you know, but there was a purpose behind that. Tommy DeVito came here knowing that he was a long shot and he had to do things the right way in order to give himself a chance. And that was basically immerse himself in the New York Giants offense and what the plan they had for him. And when he was waived here in August, the New England Patriots pushed pretty hard to get him to come up there to be on the practice squad. And he thought about it. And because the hours between waiting to see if you get claimed and signing with the team's practice squad, Tommy DeVito was sitting in a parking lot here at MetLife waiting for 4 o'clock to be able to go in and sign with the Giants on the practice squad. He had to decide that he wanted to be here. And this is where he wanted to be. This was his plan. His plan was not to start games for the New York Giants. His plan was to be the guy that develops on the practice squad, competes in practice, does well in whatever opportunity he's given. He was behind Daniel Jones and Tyrod Taylor. This was not part of the plan. Yet, the plan ended up becoming this reality. So, I said before the game... In pregame intros, the offense was introduced. And here's what Tommy DeVito said after the press conference, in his postgame press conference, but then he also told me. They're waiting in the tunnel, all the offensive players, and they have a list that's on the wall just outside the Giants' locker room right before they come in. And the smoke machine is going, and they're all coming out, you know, basically through the smoke. And on the list, it was essentially a batting order. Saquon Barkley was leadoff. And the last guy on the list was Tommy DeVito. And it said Tommy DeVito, and then it had the finger purse emoji. The mano a borsa, which is the Italian gesture that's commonly now become the DeVito, that it was part of his TD celebration. And that emoji was right next to him and his name. And at first he thought, okay, I'm, la I'm last. And then he realized, wait, I'm last? He was the last one introduced, and this crowd in MetLife embraced it, loudest cheer of the pregame, and from that point on, DeVito said, you know, it kind of blacked out. Uh, and then in the game, some of the throws he made to Jalen Hyatt were tremendous. Hyatt over 100 yards. Great game for him. And yes, DeVito took six sacks, but the reality is he keeps getting up. And, you know, I talked to Jalen Hyatt after the game, and Hyatt and Tommy DeVito have gotten very close. Now, they were close back in, in, the, in the spring. They started getting close and closer and closer. And DeVito joked with me during training camp. He said, you know, I talked to Jalen. Jalen doesn't realize, you know, I'm at one level and he's at another. I mean, he's getting, he's a third round pick. He's part of the future and I'm just fighting for my, my spot on this team. And that doesn't mean Hyatt wasn't fighting for his spot, but the reality is that DeVito knew his place and Hyatt kind of wanted to relate to him a little bit, but you know, Hyatt was in a different place in his career. And what Hyatt told me is that when Daniel Jones went down and Tyrod was already at, down, he said the team was going through it. That was Hyatt's way of putting it. He said, and what Tommy brought was confidence, that he gave us our confidence back because nothing was going to shake Tommy. He, we saw how he was sacked in Washington. We saw how he was beaten around in Dallas. Yet Tommy DeVito has basically pushed forward, and his teammates have noticed that. I wrote about it this week. Saquon Barkley, his support for Tommy DeVito was huge. And what's gone on here. So that's where we're at. You know, DeVito throws the touchdown to Isaiah Hodgins. They do their little DeVito, Mono Aborsa sign. You know, 
it, it's really taken on a, a different life here. And it'd be a fun story even if the Giants were getting drilled and losing games. But the fact that they're now 4-8 and eight, and Tommy DeVito has really directed each of the past two wins, it just gives a different feel right now. It gives you belief in the fact that what will Brian Dable and this coaching staff be able to do if they get a young quarterback to develop alongside DeVito and then Daniel Jones comes back next year from his ACL, you know, he has a place on this roster, if nothing else, because of his contract. He has to be here next year. So, you know, they have some options here, but that's the story with the way DeVito has played. And again, I can't tell you that Tommy DeVito is going to start a ton of games after this season, but I know one thing, he's earned the opportunity and earned the respect of his teammates to give him another shot on Monday night against Green Bay. And you can bet that game is not getting flexed now. That game is staying in Monday night because in part of what DeVito has done. You know, Giants defense, look, they deserve credit today. Let's get to Jay Glazer's report early this morning, if you didn't see it on Fox Sports, uh, that there's tension I think that was the word he used between Brian Dable and Wink Martindale. Um, I believe that only some of it is football wise. I think some of it is there is a personality conflict and the way the two men handle themselves as coaches. And it's easy to handle things differently when you're a coordinator versus a head coach. And last year when they were winning, allowing Wink to kind of be his own man, um, that's the way Dable handled things. Well, this year, when things are kind of going off a little bit, Dable handled the Xavier McKinney situation one way, and then Wink came out and was honest and kind of put McKinney on blast. And uh, from what I understand, it kind of, you know, it becomes a personality clash. Does Dable really want his coordinator taking a certain angle with a player uh, that's opposite of what Dable did. And you can argue who was right, who was wrong, and how they approached it. But when you're the head coach, that's the call you need to make. So, again, I, I don't know if anything is imminent that all of a sudden they're going to part ways. Um, we got to see how the season ends. Uh, and look, if the Giants only win one or two more games, they'll have to make decisions up and down the coaching staff. I believe Brian Dable will be here, but I think, you know, they're just going to have to decide what's going on. Now, you can bet that the Giants organization, someone paid attention to what was going on in the pregame show because after the game and the postgame celebration that the Giants put video of on their social media channels, Brian Dable gave the game ball to Wink Martindale. Okay? So clearly the Giants are aware of what went out there via Jay Glazer. And I, you trust Jay Glazer because he doesn't just put things out there. Now, could the perspective be a little different uh, internally than what is now perceived externally? Maybe. But the reality is we're going to find out after the season when coaches make their decisions, see what they're going to do. Um, and, you know, Dable kind of reassesses and reevaluates his coaching staff. So I think um, at this point, that's where we're at. Kayvon Thibodeau with half a sack today. He's now up to 11 for the season. Uh, it's certainly something to, to keep an eye on. He's chasing Miles Garrett at 13. He's now two behind Miles Garrett. And um, that's kind of where we're at. So we'll, we'll be back either tomorrow or Tuesday for a bye week uh, podcast. Joe Shane is going to talk tomorrow on Monday, so we'll hear from him first time since the season began, and you know we'll have the opportunity to talk to the general manager. So that'll be interesting to see which way this season uh, has gone for him, what he sees, and um, you know what they're saying for the remainder of this season and heading into 2024. So again, final score 10-7. Uh, I think you got to give again Tom. Tommy DeVito credit, these Giants have kind of, you know, stemmed the tide a little bit here. We'll see what happens. I know everyone rooting for the tank is not happy, but they're 
is about a month and a half left of this season. We'll see where they're at come April when it's time to draft and what they do and what they maneuver as far as their evaluation goes. So again, appreciate as always you being all in. We're all in as well. And we'll talk to you soon.